Hi guys, so perhaps the easiest way to understand uh, the current account and the capital account on the balance of payments is to consider an individual based analogy. So that's what we're going to do here. So we've got Fred, whose current account position is as such. Uh, right, we've got earned income of 35,000 and meanwhile we've also got investment income totaling 1,000 pounds there. So let's just put those down, 35K plus uh, 1,000 uh, and now let's just look at how he spent that money that he's actually uh, had come into his bank account there. Uh, so he's undertaken consumption spending uh, of 20,000 uh, pounds. So that's the first area here uh, that we can highlight and then we've got a house purchase uh, of 200,000 pounds. Now incidentally with this house purchase I'm considering that Fred is going to live in this house and therefore it is not going to bring in any investment income for Fred um, so we're not considering it to be an investment as such so therefore we can see £20,000 plus £200,000 uh, now what does this mean for Fred's overall position well let's put this down in red because it's certainly in red well it means he is running a negative current account position to the tune of £184,000 there uh, okay so we get we get that that's that's nice and straightforward it tells us that Fred is living beyond his means uh, how is he living beyond his means? Well, he is clearly reliant on people, other people financing his lifestyle here, okay? So let's have a look at this. So we've got Fred's capital account here. We can see that he's got a mortgage of £175,000. In addition to that, he's also got £9,000 uh, of credit card debts. So if we add those two together, then that tells us, of course, uh, that when we work through that, sorry, let's take that off, uh, we've got £184,000 positive. So he's got a positive capital account position uh, where he has money flowing to him to enable him to live beyond his means. Now, we've got a positive 184, negative 184, so therefore these, these two areas balance out, okay, just as your balance payments uh, balances. Uh, okay. So that's, that's fairly straightforward. The next thing for you to really think about, right, well, is how is Fred actually using this money? So he's bought a house, okay, well that's, that's not bad, you know, most people would, would say that's a sensible thing to do. Uh, so we can't really uh, draw any issue with that. What about this consumption spending? Does the, all of that need to be undertaken? At least it's way below his earned income. So uh, yeah, you wouldn't be too concerned about this. What you may well be concerned about, however, uh, is not the mortgage, because interest rates on mortgages are very low, but the credit card debt. Credit card debt, uh, has interest rates around about 20% or so. Uh, so he's got £9,000 worth of credit card debt. Is that a concern? Well, at least it's not 20000 or £30,000 worth, and that certainly would be a concern there. Uh, okay, nevertheless, this credit card debt is almost like a country benefiting from short-term hot money capital flows. Uh, so what's interesting is to actually consider if a country is running a current account deficit as fred is here how are they financing that are they financing that through long-term foreign direct investment inward into their country uh, which is stable which is long term a little like a mortgage or is it about short-term financial flows speculative flows of money into liquid portfolio investments such as uh, equities uh, or shares uh, and uh, government bonds uh, as well as uh, other financial assets such as derivatives. Uh, so what is taking place there? Um, but I'd be slightly concerned about that £9,000 worth of credit card debt there. Uh, okay, so there we go. That's nice and straightforward in terms of us understanding uh, the balance payments position for an individual and for a country therefore. Uh, but what's important to note is where you run a deficit in one area, you run a surplus elsewhere. Okay. Further to that, 
you can then extend this to two people. Perhaps imagine two people in, in a, uh, a given economy. If one of them runs a surplus, the other will run a deficit. Uh, okay. Now, if you take that further up, you can also see that perhaps if the private sector uh, runs a surplus and they consume less than they actually earn in terms of their actual sales income, uh, then they have a surplus. Well, that will mean by definition that the public sector will uh, run a deficit. Okay, so at times you can see question, questions on this in the multiple choice paper uh, where they're asking you about the private sector balance and the public sector balance. Well, if the private sector balance is in surplus, the public sector balance will be in deficit for exactly the same sorts of reasons as we see here. Uh, okay, right. I hope that's all right, guys. Thanks a lot.